Welcome back to our discussion about solving polynomial equations. And in this video, we are going to tackle these last two tasks because they're pretty much the same thing. All right, finding the zeros of a polynomial function and solving polynomial equations, they both utilize the same techniques. So what are those techniques? Well, to find the zeros of a polynomial function, remember that zeros are x-intercepts. Okay, so how do you find an x-intercept? Well, you set the equation equal to zero and solve for x. So if a polynomial is not factorable, if we can't factor it by grouping or we can't use reverse FOIL, we need to go through a different process. And this is the process. The first thing you're going to want to do is list all the possible rational zeros, and that's using that rational zero theorem that we talked about in the last skill. Okay, the next thing you're going to want to do is look at that list of possibilities and find one of those possibilities that's an actual zero by using synthetic division and the factor theorem. If it's an actual zero, that means the remainder will be zero. Okay. Now, if you're allowed to use a graphing calculator, comparing your list to the graph can help you make smart choices. If you're not allowed to use a graphing calculator, you're going to have to do some guessing and checking and, and see what actually works for you. Okay. Uh, if you are my student, then you're going to want to go ahead and compare your list to a graph. All right, what are you looking for on the graph? You're looking for x-intercepts, okay? So the next thing you're going to want to do is after you've found something that works with synthetic division, you're going to rewrite your function in factored form, okay? And you're going to continue this process until the whole function is written in factored form with only linear and or quadratic factors. Okay. Then you're going to take each of those factors, set them equal to zero, and solve for x. Your resulting quadratic equations can be solved by either factoring or the quadratic formula. Some of them will not be factorable, and so if they're not factorable, you are going to want to resort to the quadratic formula. And then the last thing you're going to want to do is list your solution set. Okay, so here's your list, here's your procedure, let's give it a shot. First example here, find the zeros of the function f of x is equal to negative 2x cubed minus 8x squared plus 14x plus 20. Okay, remember the first thing we want to do is list our possible rational zeros, okay? So we're going to list all the factors of 20 divided by all the factors of negative 2. So what do you think for the factors of 20? We know 1, we know 2, no 3, no 3 does not work, 4 does, 5 does, and then we've got a pair so we're just looking for the matches for 2 and 1. So 10 and 20. 1, 2, 4, 5, 10 and 20. And then the factors of negative 2 are just going to be 1 and 2. Now, listing them all out, remember you're going to take all the factors in the numerator and put them over the first possibility in the denominator, and then do the same thing with all the factors in the numerator and the second candidate in the denominator. And notice that if I say 2 over 2, I'm going to get 1, which I already got from 1 over 1. I don't need to write that more than once. Um, so I just want to add the, the new candidates from the option of 2 in the denominator. So this is my list. And this is a fairly long list. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 numbers and the positive and negative versions of them. So I've got 16 options as possibilities. Okay, and so that's why looking at a graph helps us make smart choices because sometimes when there's lots of possibilities, we may not feel like spending a whole lot of time 
uh, synthetic division. Okay, so let's take a look at a graph. Okay, and remember what we're looking at. We're looking for x-intercepts. And it looks like we might have one at negative 5, which is on our list, negative 1, which is also on our list, and positive 2, also on our list. So we think that the graph and the list match up at negative 5, negative 1, and positive 2. So these look like smart choices. So I'm going to choose one of these values. And I'm going to see if it works with synthetic division, see if it's an actual zero. All right, so it doesn't matter which one you choose. I'm just going to choose the first one we identified, negative 5. So I'll put negative 5 here in the box for synthetic. And there's my coefficients to my function. And I'm going to go through that process. Bring down the negative 2, multiply that by negative 5, gets positive 10. Add that to the negative 8, gets positive 2. Multiply it by negative 5, gets negative 10. Add that to the 14, gives me 4. 4 times negative 5 is negative 20. And that gives me a remainder of 0, which is what I want. Perfect. So I know negative 5 is a 0. So the next thing I want to do is use what I've done here and rewrite my function in factored form. Okay, so here's my function, and I'm going to rewrite it in factored form. One of my factors is going to come from this 0. Remember, if negative 5 is a 0, x minus negative 5 is a factor, so x plus 5. Okay, so that's where this comes from. What remains here are the coefficients of the remaining polynomial. Okay, so this is now a quadratic. So it's in a linear and quadratic form. I can go ahead and set each of these factors equal to zero. This is easy. I know negative five is going to be a zero. Um, and I can set this equal to zero and use quadratic formula or maybe factor it. But here's the thing, if I have other options that I think might work, I can go ahead and continue this process with another option. So let's choose another one. How about negative one? Let's choose the next one in our list and see if negative one works. We're just gonna pick up where we left off because if something's a factor of this piece, it's also a factor of this piece. Okay, so I am going to take this piece and see if I can break it apart. Let's use synthetic here. So bring down the negative 2, multiply by negative 1 gives me positive 2, add that together gives me 4, multiply by negative 1 gives me negative 4, and yay, I have a remainder of 0, which means negative 1 also works. Okay, and so now I'm going to take this piece, this quadratic, and break it into a factor here from, from the divisor and a factor here, okay? So this is how this ends up being factored. Now notice I have one, two, three factors that are all linear in nature. I can set each of them equal to zero and get my three um, solutions. Okay, now we got these actually from the graph, right? And we verified them algebraically. That doesn't always happen. I chose something fairly easy to start us off with so that we could kind of see the process. Let's see another example where that's not the case, okay? Okay, so this one is phrased just a little bit differently. Solve the polynomial equation for x. And we have an equation that's set equal to zero instead of just a function. But remember, if I'm finding the zeros of a function, I'm setting that function equal to zero and solving for x. So I'm really doing exactly the same thing here. So I use the exact same process. Let's start by listing our factors so we can find all our possibilities. What are all the factors of four? Hopefully you said 1, 2, and 4, and the factors of 1, well, that's easy. That's just 1. So we have a smaller number of possibilities this time, and when I list them all out, I just have plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, plus or minus 4. So only six options. So 
if you're feeling lucky, go ahead and try one. Um, I am all about being efficient, so I'm going to look at the graph. Let's take a look at the graph here. All right, so I'm looking at this graph and I am comparing it to my list of possible rational zeros. And I'm seeing that plus or minus one is neither one of those is a zero on this graph. But plus or minus two definitely is. Plus or minus four doesn't work for us either. So we're going to use plus or minus two here. All right, so we are going to say that it looks like negative two and positive two are my smart choices. So let's choose one of these to get started with. Let's choose negative two. And here are my coefficients. Let's use synthetic. Bring down the one, multiply by negative two, add it up to negative two, gives us negative four. Multiply by negative two gives us positive eight. Add it to negative five gives us three. Three times negative two is negative six. Add that to the eight gives us two, and two times negative two is negative four, which gives us a remainder of zero. Fabulous. Okay, so here's my equation. Let's write it in factored form based on what we just did. We'll get a factor from the divisor. So x minus this will become our factor. So this will be x plus two. And then I will have a cubic function that comes from this. x cubed minus four x squared plus three x plus two. Okay, so we've broken this down. But we haven't broken it down quite enough because I need this cubic to be smaller than this. It needs to be at maximum a quadratic. So I'm going to use this other option that looks good and continue this process. So I'm going to say let's try positive 2 now. So bring down the 1, give me 1, multiply it by 2, add it to negative 4, multiply it by 2, and add that to 3, multiply it by 2, and add that gives us a remainder of 0. Fantastic. So now I'm, I can take that cubic function and break that down a little further. So I'll have a linear function x minus 2, and then I'll have a quadratic here, x squared minus 2x minus 1. All right, so let's see. Does this factor, x squared minus 2x minus 1, Huh. Are there anything that multiplies together and gives me negative 1, but when I add them, gives me negative 2? Yeah, the only things that multiply together to give me negative 1 are 1 and negative 1. And when I add them, I get 0, so that doesn't work. Which means I'm going to need to use the quadratic formula here. I'm going to set each of those factors equal to 0. The first two are really easy, but I'll need to use the quadratic formula for the second one. And when I simplify that all up, I get 1 plus or minus the square root of 2 for this last piece. Now, if you know the square root of 2 is about 1.4, you can double check this on your graph. Because 1 plus 1.4 is about 2.4, and 1 minus 1.4 is about negative 0.4. All right, so uh, all of these match up with what we see on the graph, and this, this would be our solution set. So this is the process in solving polynomial equations that we can't factor, or finding the zeros of a polynomial function, or sometimes it's just called finding the roots of a function. All of those really mean the same thing, and you're going to use the same process throughout. All right, that wraps up polynomial equations. I'll see you next time.